here, uh, pre-lab discussions for experiment five, thin layer chromatography. Thin layer chromatography, just like other chromatography, which could be paper chromatography, liquid chromatography, or column chromatography. It could be GC or gas chromatography. It's a non-invasive technique. You don't have to use a lot of chemicals. You're working like with one drop of the sample. So that's big advantage. And it is very fast. You'll see this experiment. It doesn't take long. It's a very fast experiment. The application or purpose of chromatography, it could be for identification of the compound and also for determining purity of the sample. And uh, for the identification, we must have unknown with possible known sample tested at the same time on the TLC plate because the condition to keep the condition or save the condition from one container to another container is kind of impossible. So we have to have the known sample or known possible sample or possible known samples and are unknown to, to compare. We can also find out if the, like a separation technique or purification technique was um, efficient. Um, we can also monitor a reaction. If the reactant and products, they have different uh, behavior on the TLC plate, then you can see if the product has formed, the reactant has disappeared. Uh, we can look at the progress of the reaction, like how much of the product is formed or how much of the reactant has been or what percent of the product has been um, formed. In any of the chromatography, we have two components, two major components. One is known as a mobile phase. The other one is a stationary phase. In a mobile phase, that would be like a a liquid or gas, a solution of that uh, moving along the stationary phase and also taking the samples with it. So basically we have a solution of gas or, or liquid that moving along. The stationary phase is uh, for TLC, um, you have like a, a either plastic or glass, the, what, the samples that we are using in the in my lab, in our lab is plastic, coated with uh, um, silica gel or alumina. So, but that's the stationary phase. Now, the silica gel, the silica is good for polar samples like aldehyde, ketones, alcohols, amines, or carboxylic acid. But alumina is good for more like nonpolar compounds like hydrocarbons, alkyl halides, and, and uh, ether. So how does chromatography actually work? For the, uh, for the samples, okay, for the samples, so if you look at this plate here, first, Samples on the TLC plate, they're going to be uh, spotted on this uh, position, basically about one third of an inch from the bottom um, of, the, of the plate. Then you put your sample, small amount of sample because you don't want to get, you know, um, merge or um, leaking of the sample over one another. Um, so you could get them like separate. After you put your sample on the plate, then you are going to place it in developing chamber where you have the solvent going to, to be, you know, the, the plate should be inside the liquid, but the level of the liquid should be below the level of the, of the sample. Otherwise the sample is going to be washed down. The liquid is going to go up or the, Mobile phase is going to go up by the capillary action, 
And when it gets to this sample, now the sample has, there's like competition. There's interaction between that sample and the plate or a stationary phase and the interaction between the sample and the, the mobile phase. Now, if the sample, if the plate is polar and the sample is polar, it's going to attach to the plate strongly, it's not going to move up, so it's going to move up very slow. If the sample is non-polar, but the plate is polar, the sample is going to move up faster. When the, the solvent reaches to the, to the top, about half an inch from the top, you're going to stop and draw this line. And this sample, this distance C is the distance traveled by the, by the solvent. Now you can also measure how much each of the samples have traveled. Like sample A traveled this much, sample B has traveled. Then you find that ratio. So when you find that ratio like A divided by C, it would be a number between zero and one. Okay, would be a number between zero and one, and that is known as the RF value. The RF value of the sample is going to be equal to another sample if they are same. So if you're unknown, um, if this X was your unknown, or and then Y was known sample, you knew what it is, this X, Y, then you could say if the RF is the same, so this compound or the unknown can should be uh, like this spot. And you notice here, we have one sample that it shows two um, the um, spot. If it shows two spot, that means it's a mixture. So it did separate over here. Okay, it's not always one pure um, compound. Like if you have aspirin, then you have like excedrin. Excedrin has other components in there, like it has caffeine and uh, and the painkiller. So it would show like two spots if it shows one spot. And this fact can be used to identify purity of the sample. Let's say I have a, uh, I, I've done extraction last week and I wanna find out my sample if it's pure or not, or did I recover a pure sample, uh, pure organic acid? When I run the, the chromatography, if it only shows one spot, that means it's pure. But if it shows two spots, that means it's mixed with the organic neutral compound. So this fact also can be used and it has different applications. So with the TLC, after the sample is uh, developed, uh, you take it out of the solvent, let it dry, then you need to visualize it. In order to visualize, you can use uh, UV light, you can use iodine vapor, or if it gives you color compound, um, then you can just visual it directly without any uh, UV light. And after you like trace the spots and measure the distance, you can calculate the RF value for known samples and for the unknown and compare the two in order to identify your unknown sample. This diagram here, it shows the developing chamber. For the developing chamber, uh, we like to make sure that is like it may, a jar works perfect because it has a lid. Um, the air inside needs to be saturated with the vapor of the developing solvent. And I also add this filter paper inside, which allows evaporation. Uh, before you put the TLC plate, and that helps with the saturation of this um, air inside the container with the vapor of the uh, developing solvent. And that is going to make movement of the solvent smooth. If not, you would have like wave. 
you would have wave because as the liquid is going up, also is evaporating from the surface. So it's important for you to have a saturated container. As I promised, this is like a very short um, experiment and as a result, a short uh, pre-lab discussions, but very versatile um, technique and non-invasive is that you can have just one drop of a sample and you could do experiment with that one drop where you cannot do distillation or extraction or decrystallization if you have one drop of the, of the sample. So, and this is separation is based on the polarity of the compound. Uh, they must have different uh, polarity. Thank you.